Welcome to another video. Let us try to obtain the formula for the perimeter of a circle using calculus. I already drew the picture on the board and I'm just going to narrow things down so it's easier for us to deal with. Now we know this is a circle, so you must think if he's using calculus, there must be a function. Well, we're going to be using the equation of a circle. But we know that a circle is not a function. If we look at that function, that equation, because uh, this does not pass the vertical line test. So what we're going to do is just take a portion that passes the vertical line test, and then we're just going to work through it. Um, we don't want to go around. We're just going to say, okay, let's start from zero and go all the way to the end, to the circumference, which is going to be the radius. So the distance along the x-axis all the way here is going to be r. So the length we have here is r, so it's just going to be from zero to r. Okay, that's going to be the length. And we're just going to be measuring the length of this arc starting from here to this point. And we know that this is a quarter of the perimeter. Once we know the length from here to here, it is the same as from here to here. We just need to multiply this by four and we get the total. So what we're gonna do is just find this blue part that I just marked. And when we're done, we'll multiply by four and see if we're gonna get two pi r. And that's the mission. Let's get into the video. The first thing we need is the equation of the arc that we're trying to compute the length of. So, what is the equation of the circle? We know that the general equation of a circle, let's start with that. We know that um, it's usually y squared plus x squared is equal to a certain number, and that number is usually um, the square of the radius. So we can say it's equal to r squared. We just we don't want to pick a number, we just want to do a general formula so that r is going to show up in our answer. So what we're going to say here is, okay, I have this, um, but I need an equation that is actually a function. So I'm going to move this x squared over. So I have y squared equals r squared minus x squared. Okay, now if I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to have y will be equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now, but I'm going to erase this plus or minus because the y that we're dealing with for this problem does not have plus or minus. You can see we're staying in the first quadrant, so the values of y are all positive above the x-axis and the values of x are all positive. You can see, so plus or minus is not relevant here, it's always plus. So I'm going to erase this part. So this is what we have. Now, what do we need? We need the formula for computing the arc length of any arc. And that formula was on the thumbnail, we're going to use it because that's what we need. And we also need the limits of integration. The limits of integration are from the point, the value of x where you start, to where you're going to end. Like I said, we're going to start from zero and we're going to end here because that's the, that's the farthest you can go inside the circle from the center, which is the radius. So that we're going to integrate from zero to r along the x-axis. So what's our formula? We know that the length of any arc is the integral of the square root of one plus dy dx squared dx. I did a video a while ago explaining how this was ob obtained and how to use it. So we're just going to use it now and we're integrating from a to b. So this is going to be our a, the beginning, and this is going to be our b, the ending. And we just need to know what dy dx is, square it, add one to it. We know what a is, we know what b is, and essentially that. So I'm going to try to translate this here and see what's going to happen. I'm going to say that this is equal to, in our case, the integral from 0 to r of the square root of 1 plus, what is dy dx? Well, this is our y, so it's going to be the derivative of this. It's going to be square root 
of r squared minus x squared. We take the derivative and then we square it. Nice. Then we put dx here. This is it. So the biggest task that we have is taking this derivative, squaring it, and then adding one to it, and then taking the square root of it, and then integrating it. Okay, I know. It's ev that's everything we're supposed to do. So let's begin by taking the derivative first. Let's look for y prime. So I can, you can actually write this as y prime. It doesn't matter. So we have, now we need to differentiate this. Um, this is what I recommend always, that what you do is y prime, whenever you have a square root function, look inside. Remember, this r is not a variable. This is the only variable. This is a number. So see it as if it is 1, okay, or 4, whatever you think. Now, when you take the derivative of what's inside, this is going to go to 0. This becomes negative 2x. So you're going to end up with negative 2x on top of this same radical, r squared minus x squared multiplied by 2. This is always what happens whenever you differentiate a radical function. It makes your life faster if you just have this understanding. You differentiate this, this is what you're going to get. Now try to change it into the power rule and then change it. You'll find out that you're coming back here. Now I can cancel this too and cancel, oh by the way, hey the derivative of the inside is negative 2x. I almost missed that. So if I cancel this and cancel this, I'm going to end up with y prime is equal to negative x over the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, so the first mission is accomplished. We have found this derivative dy dx. Now we need to square it and we need to add 1 to it. So let's square first. What is y prime squared? It's going to be the square of this. When I square negative x, I'm going to get x squared. And when I square the square root of r squared minus x squared, I'm going to get just r squared minus x squared. So now what do I need to do? I need to add 1 to it. So what about y prime squared plus 1? That's going to be equal to x squared over r squared minus x squared plus 1. Now, anytime you're adding 1 to a fraction, it is better to write it as the denominator divided by itself. So write it as r squared minus x squared over r squared minus x squared. This is a good strategy for you every time you do this. So now we have the same denominator. We can just resolve the top and see what the top resolves into. x squared plus r squared minus x squared. So this x squared takes care of this. You only have r squared remaining. We got r squared over r squared minus x squared. That is our 1 plus dy dx squared. This thing here, we already figured it out. So now can we take the square root of it and see what happens? It looks like it. If we decide to take the square root, this is going to become r. I know it's the absolute value of r squared, but we remember the radius is always positive, so we don't need the absolute value there. And if we take the square root of this, it's just going to remain like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the square root of this, which is going to be all of this now, and that means I'm taking the square root of this. But if I take the square root of this, this is going to become just r, and the bottom is going to have a square root. So this is what I need. So it's time to go back to this and plug in all the values that we have. And we know it's from 0 to r, and we already know what's on the inside. So what we have, we know that the length of the arc is going to be equal to, I'm trying to manage my space as much as possible, it's going to be um, the integrand from 0 to r, of, we already took the square root, so this is the square, it's going to be r, let's write, r over square root of r squared minus x squared. 
dx. Okay. Now, already because I am subtracting a variable from a constant, I know I will be doing some trig substitution using sine or cosine, but sine is my first choice. So, but I want to make this one, always make this one. So I'm going to factor out r squared from here because I need to save space. I'm going to do some rough work here and then erase it. So let's simplify what we have here. You see r over square root of r squared minus x squared is the same thing as r over, this is going to be, I'm going to factor out r squared, so it's the square root of r squared. Now remember when you factor, it means you're dividing by whatever you factor out. So I'm going to factor out r squared, it means I'm going to divide this by r squared, which leaves me with 1, and I'm going to divide this also by r squared, which leaves me with x squared over r squared, over r squared. But this x squared over r squared can be written as x over r, but I'm going to fix that later, okay? So what does this mean? Let's go one more step. This is going to be r over, now this I can pull out, the square root of r squared is r, so I put it here, and on the inside I have 1 minus x over r, all squared. And this r is going to cancel this r, so what I have ultimately is 1 over, oh, come on, the square root. So 1 over the square root of 1 minus x over r squared. This is what's going to go here. So here, we're going to have this is equal to the integral from 0 to r of 1 over, what do we have? the square root of 1 minus x over r squared. Okay, now we can do our trig substitution. For the trig substitution, we say let sine theta be x over r. So we say let x over r be sine theta. So we know that x equals r sine theta. Don't forget r is a constant, it's a number. So if we take the derivative of both sides, what do we get? We get dx is going to be r cosine theta d theta. So what we have is just going to be the integral without the bounds is going to be 1 over the square root of, is now going to be 1 minus sine squared theta, 1 minus sine squared theta, Okay, so what's dx? dx is now r cosine theta d theta. We're going to write that r cosine theta d theta. And we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. So I'm going to remove this and put cosine squared theta. But we know that the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine theta. <laughs> okay, well, plus or minus. But again, we are in the first quadrant. Okay, don't forget that. So I'm going to write just cosine theta. But this cosine theta here, there's also cosine theta here. So they cancel each other out, right? <laughs> so that what you have left here is just the integral of r. I can even put the r out, okay, r d theta. So we have the integral r d theta, which is equal to r times, if you integrate this, you get theta. So if I write it in terms of r d theta, and it's just, it's just gonna be r times theta, but we're gonna be evaluating from zero to r, but I can't write theta here because I have to go back and replace theta because remember our integration is in terms of x, but we just did a trig substitution. So let's go back and replace this theta, okay? Instead of evaluating, so it's supposed to be from zero to r, but we cannot use theta in our evaluation. What is theta? Theta has to be arc sine x over r. So I rewrite this. Yeah, let's rewrite it. This is going to be equal to r times arc sine of x 
over r. Yes, and this is what we need to evaluate from 0 to r. So how do we evaluate this? Very easy. Just plug in r and plug in 0. So what we have is our arc length. So the arc sine of an angle is 1. That angle must be pi over 2. So it means what we have is r multiplied by pi over 2 minus this 0 over a number is 0. So this is 0. The arc sine of 0 is 0. So what do we have? This gives us pi r over 2. So the length from here to here is pi r over 2. And remember what we said. We need 4 of it to complete a circle. So by the time we add this and this and this to this, you're going to get a full circle, which is 4 times this. So the circumference. equals 4 times the length of the arc that we computed, which is 4 times pi r over 2. And what does that look like? Okay, done. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.